through that that grieving process let's talk about where someone like jim came in into into play um because i've heard jim tell your story brilliantly and and almost he he gets emotional talking about the story as well um just shows how much he does really care about his his people um so where did where did where did someone like him come into your life so uh, let's see um it was so 92 would have been the next games it was only a year or so before those olympics in alberville and (laughs) uh a couple reasons first of all as I said, for me, it was a, it was a, I was still kind of going through this whole process, but I I would be on the ice. Of course, I, you know, now I'm starting, I've, I've continued the seasons in between and I'm doing well. I'm winning world cup races and so forth. Um, But every single interview, and I'm not exaggerating. I think every single one asked me if I'm, when I get, to the 92 games when I get to Alberville, am I going to be thinking about my sister or, or about falling? And it's, you know, it's pretty hard not to when, when everybody yeah. asks you that. Right. Um, and so that was, that was one of the things. And I was, uh, had an agent at the time who just so happened to read an article on Dr. Jim Lair in a magazine at that time, Jim worked with a lot of tennis players and mm. uh, being a former player himself. And and he said, do you think you'd be interested in speaking with him? And I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd, I'd never never done that before, never worked with a sports psychologist before. And he really was – it was early in the sports psychology mm. world, if you he's will. One, he's, I mean, one of the, he's one of the godfathers almost. Correct. And – and so I did. I went down to uh, Florida to meet with him, and um, and then we man, we worked together for till the end of my career. Um, you know, as soon as I met him, I had this feeling of I don't know what it is about this guy. He seems to really understand my mind. He seems to understand what uh, you know what makes me feel better when I think about it or when I think. Um, you know, he seems to make me more appreciative of, uh, of what I've done so far. Um, and not, you know, and, you know, and that's a big part of it. I think, as you know, you know, mindfulness, uh, gratefulness, all of that is, is a big part. And, um, he really made me, instead of just thinking about results, uh, it was, it was really process oriented and, and being grateful for, for all the things that for even the even the tough times but i could learn from those instead of just going through them and you know so um anyway so yeah we worked together but that's how it started and and it, it was a it was a great very fortunate thing for me I, I think i heard him say that you initially 500 was your favorite event and you mm-hmm. didn't really like the thousand is that mm-hmm. is that accurate but he very accurate but he tried to help convince you to love the thousand. Yeah. Uh, So I, I had a, so I absolutely had the talent to skate a thousand meters. I had the speed. Everybody knew that. Um, It was more of a, and, and even the endurance, I had the endurance because a thousand meters is tough. You know, think about sprinting all out for a minute and, 12 minute, 13, 14 seconds. I mean, it's, it's a controlled sprint, right? You have to, mm. you can't just run it like a hundred meter dash, you know, you have to be controlled. And, and I always, when I would go to the start line for 500 meters, I was, it was the greatest feeling I would, I would live for it. I would get this tunnel vision and just look down that straight and couldn't wait for the gun to go off. And I told him, I said, I, that's that's I love that. I said I never feel that way when I go to the line for a thousand. I never do. I'm always worried about when I'm gonna hit the wall, basically when the, when the pain's gonna come. And uh, you know, and it's even the, even after a, some good results in the thousand, it just never never cared for it as much. And so yeah, we worked we worked for three years on. Um, I'm not changing my mindset toward that race. 
And you mentioned things like mindfulness and gratitude. Do you know the types of exercises that Jim and and you had worked on in trying to change your mindset in in that moment? Uh, you know, a lot of them were were some were basic without even having to do anything with my sport. Um, just you know, writing down things every day that that you're grateful for. It might be simply waking up. It might be uh, being able to see the, you know, scenery outside. It could have been anything, um, you know, and then you get more specific into, into the sport itself, but, um, just general gratefulness is a big thing. I think that everybody can benefit from, right. I mean, because it, you know, when we, when we go through life, it's, you know, no matter what our little windows are, the things that we do, um, there's a bigger world out there, right? I mean, um, you and I happen to be kind of in the same business at the moment. Um, but, but there are, there are more things out there that other people have no idea, nor do we have an idea of what they do day to day. Right. But, um, but we can all kind of, uh, have a common commonality about, about just simply being grateful for things. 